last talk today. It's tough. I promise I try to do it as minimal and as in, uh, invasive as possible. To, <laughs> but um, well, my job is not that difficult because um, the aspect of uh, minimal invasive surgery was touched so many times by very good speakers before. So that I think that I just want to summarize in a way what we think could be a good option for minimal invasive surgery. Just to give you, uh, again, uh, an, an idea what we're talking about, minimal, uh, minimal invasive surgery is the access to the bone through a window, minimal trauma to the soft tissue on the bone, minimal additional trauma at the fracture site when direct reduction is necessary, or, and uh, tools which cause, co cause small footprints. Now, um, just give me some seconds to show you how we got there, what, what is possible, what do we have to do good uh, minimal invasive surgery? The development of the last years were fantastic. Then we will talk about some indication and some surgical techniques we ha have not touched until now. Now, well, of course, this is now familiar, familiar to you. Uh, I think one very important aspect for minimal in sur uh, invasive surgery was uh, the fact that you can use an internal fixator, that you don't rely anymore on the tight compression, compression between the screw and the bone. Another important aspect is the anatomical design of the metaphyseal plates. You by yourself did this kind of um, bending to um, make it possible for this plate to lay exactly on the, on the distal tibia. Um, but when you want to do a minimal invasive surgery, of course it's sometimes helpful that the plate by itself has already an anatomical shape. Um, otherwise you, had to, you would, have bend, uh, would have to bend and go in and out again and you cannot use the blade straightforward because um, otherwise it would uh, interfere with the soft tissue. But in that way, you can use the blade at the same time as a kind of a template um, so when, once you have a severely comminuted fracture. I think this is important development as well. Then we've got some targeting tools. You've already seen them. They allow us to find these holes through thicker soft tissue layers so that we just have to open in the region of interest and then do the rest by percutaneous screwing. Another important aspect, especially when you go to the more complicated cases, is the planning using modern uh, forms of uh, imaging like this 3D scan. We'll, you will come back to this later, but this is very helpful when you plan a complicated operation. As, of course, you have to plan how to uh, reduce it, how to fix it temporarily, and then how to put your plate in. But once you have the possibility to have a three-dimensional CT scan, this is definitely easier. Then the operative setting, we've been talking about this before. One of the, the, the most important aspects of minimal invasive surgery is to use the use of the ligamento taxis, was said before. And therefore, we need the patient in an optimal position, and therefore, we've got different kind of tables. For example, when you do minimal invasive surgery at the shoulder, it is very helpful to have beach chair, traction table was already men mentioned, fracture table, carbon fiber table, radiolucent for complex uh, fractures of the pelvic. We'll talk about this later. And then the working horse of the minimal invasive surgery is the intensifier. You have to have a good intensifier. You cannot do the operation without an intensifier. If you can imagine the intensifier, that's, that's your eyes. You know, the, the, the most important, the most difficult thing in minimal invasive surgery is to transfer the two-dimensional picture you get from your intensifier in the three-dimensional situation you find uh, below the skin. And that, that is the thing that makes it that difficult, but the only, that's the only thing you have in most of the situation. Some, some areas you can reach with your fingers, but most of the time if you want to do indirect reduction, the intensifier is very important. Therefore, when you plan your operation, the position of the intensifier in these operations is of a very important rule. Then something I, I just wanted to mention is the, is the computer-assisted surgery. You've probably heard about it. We've got the possibility to make a fantastic planning preoperatively. We can use these pictures intraoperatively and combine this with uh, computer animation to <coughs> check out where the optimal position of our screw might go. But of course, this is still not um, a standard procedure because once you've done your reduction, all the information you got from the first CT scan is gone, and you should do another CT scan, another CT scan. So it's only good for the not, compli not complicated, not dislocates a fracture situation where you 
might, where you like to use just a percutaneous screw in this, in this, in this situation, but this is pretty rare, even in our hospital. So, but the most important factor, what would you think to do a good minimal invasive surgery? It's just the experience you, you have to get, you know. That's not from one moment to another. So you have to have experience with open approaches. You have to have a good teacher. And then you start st step by step with the easier cases. And at the end, you will end up with the more complicated ones. But of course, it's very difficult because you have to think uh, three-dimensionally during the operation. But let's go into detail. What would you say? This is a distal tibia fracture, um, not severely comminuted little displacement of the fibula. I think it's a good case for minimal invasive surgery. We've already heard about this. Um, and that was the result. What would you say about this? You could do the voting if you want to. Um, I think you're already a little bit experienced. So what went wrong in that situation? In a way, I'm sure you won't like it. If it would be you who had to explain this, this uh, osteosynthesis to your boss on the next morning, Okay, so do you think that the implant is wrong? That is an anatomical pre-shaped plate that was used. Do you think that the reduction was wrong? You think, you think the reduction and the implant at the fibula are wrong? Or you think reduction and the implant at the tibia were wrong in that situation? So just give me your vote. Well, there's no answer, no right or wrong, but maybe how, it's, it's interesting for me to see how you would Can we have them voting? That's not working. I gave it to the guys. So um, just raise your hands. Um, you think implant selection, well, you could do this with a name maybe, but I think the implant is okay. It was, a, was made for this. Reduction, yes, okay. Reduction and wrong implant at the fibula, yeah. <laughs> It's a good job this week. <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, I think this is the, the, the crucial point. They, they used a, an unstable implant, and when they were introducing the plate here, the whole thing bended over to the other side. So if you want to do this stable, minimal, invasively, you probably should go a little bit more invasive on the lateral side, where it's not that complicated. Put a plate here, and then probably this, this interoperative problem of reduction wouldn't have happened. Okay, but the question to me was when to use uh, minimal invasive surgery. I would say as often as it's possible because something that is good for a 90-year-old lady or for a soft tissue injury grade C or 3 might be even good in a young lady with, without soft tissue injury. Okay, but of course you have to respect the fact, as we've seen it before, at the end the x-ray should be the same as if it was done in open reduction. So just talking about the indication, looking to the bone, I think this is pretty easy for you as well now. I think the most minimal invasive way to treat a diaphyseal fracture is a nail. You go in far away from the fracture site, you don't compromise the fracture site. That should you be your plan A. Sometimes you've seen that a plan B, a plate can be appropriate. And then the plates, they have the main job of the plates, of the locking plates in minimal invasive surgery is to make a transfer from a reduced articular aspect to the shaft, not to touch this like a um, relevant um, stability. So what could, what could be a good indication for minimal invasive surgery? Let's go through it very quickly. That's soft tissue damage. We've heard this before. Severe soft tissue damage. Brian already showed us how to treat this. And um, yeah, one, one day you have to go back and have to do the definite surgery. And of course, in a situation like this, where you've got a big hole on the medial side of the femur, for example, you don't want to do too much damage on the other side. So um, the optimal position, for example, in this case, for the, for the plate is the lateral aspect. So you go in by a small incision using that straight skin defect and entering the plate without additional trauma. I think this is one of the m major indication to think very intensively about minimal invasive surgery when you've got already a severe soft tissue damage. But there are other good indications as well. We have not spoken, spoken about the geriatric trauma, osteoporotic fractures. To my knowledge, it is not 100% clear whether an osteoporotic bone will heal delayed comparing to a young patient, but 
Recently, a paper was published in injury, and they were able to show that stable callus formation in older patients was seen a little bit later, about three to four weeks, than in younger patients. Probably this is due to the concomitant diseases like diabetes, vascular diseases, something else. But anyway, um, we are not sure, but we don't want to have uh, in a situation like this um, stressed by additional ligation, for example, of all the perforator vessels when we do a, a periprostatic fracture treatment in the femur. Because if you do it the classical way, you know this already, open way, standard implants, the complication rates for these fractures were up to 40% in osteoporotic patients even higher. So and this was already shown this morning by Matthew. This mo and that way, in these osteoporotic fractures, I think minimal invasive a surgery, and that is a C-type fracture, putting some leg screws, and then you go in and you bridge this area is a good way not to touch the blood supply in this area. So in osteoporotic bone, I think minimal invasive surgery is good. You can use it as well in periprosthetic fractures, like this one, for example. Here you got a long spiral fracture, and uh, the implant was still in place, and you don't want to remove it because it's fixed in this uh, proximal part of the femur. So you can use uh, the plate I've shown you the other way around. You go for your area where the fracture is, you do a reduction. And these situations when you have only two fragments, I think it's nice to have a, an open direct reduction, just pulling until the fragments fit into each other. Then you know that you're right according to the rotation mm -hmm. and uh, axis. And you might put a, a circlage very carefully around without stripping the femur. Only one circlage in that area is not Cause, does not cause too much damage, but gives good stability, and then you insert the plate. And this is the situation then. Um, the patient, and you see, even a, a fracture like this can heal without callus formation. But in the proximal part, you have to rely on some circlages sometimes, or you have to use a, a, multi, a polyaxial locking plate. And according to the literature, you can see that using these more modern implants for geriatric fractures, the results are significantly better than in former days. Of course, uh, in patients with concomitant diseases, like this lady, for example, with a severe immunosuppression because of a lung transplantation, minimal invasive surgery of the shoulder might be good. When you have less hematoma, less necrosis of the muscle, you could uh, choose this one, but only if you are experienced in doing this minimal invasive procedure. And coming to the last case, just putting everything together in a very complicated case, but just to show you what is possible if you respect all the aspects that we've been talking about, planning, this is Opera. This guy had a motor vehicle accident about 70 years, terminal renal failure, bad quality of the bone, various operation of his vessels. So you've got this adstabular fracture. In that situation, it does not look too complicated, but when you do the CT, you see a displaced anterior wall, but the posterior wall is still intact. This is a typical osteoporotic uh, um, adstabular fracture of an older person. And if you want to put the prosthesis, for example, you have a big problem to fix the cup in this pelvis. So you would like to go for a minimal invasive operation because this is the standard approach. And this uh, irregular approach is, uh, is um, combined with a very high morbidity. So if you do the planning according to the CT scan, you take the intensifier, you put this, this leg is mobile, then you, go, you look right in the area of interest, you make a step incision, you go through the abdominal wall, parallel to the uh, rectus abdominis, um, retroperineal, and then you go below the vessels to the symphysis, Then you can use one of those retractors, symframes, which comes from the spinal surgery. By this, you can nicely reduce your big fragment you had, you can clean the fracture, you can reduce it, and then by using a cannulated screw, um, you fix the articular joint and then you insert a neutralizing preformed pre um, reconstruction blade. So you see the result to a small incision and this is the reconstruction on the plate and this is the patient. You see small incisions okay, here. These are the, the incisions from the previous um, so, but I don't have vascular, vascular, um, or this is vascular operation. So let me close. Advantage of minimal invasive surgery. I've got better bone healing, of course. Less infection. Lesser need for bone graft. Nearly, it's pretty seldom. Probably the pain for the patient uh, in the beginning, right, the few days after the operation is lesser. 
you can rehabilitate easier, and of course you have better cosmesis. Um, the disadvantage is you've got a limited view to your fracture. You have this increased CR time, that's truly. Sometimes if you do it wrong, you have malunion and you need more experience. But I think for us experienced ones, this is uh, some good reason to stay with trauma surgery because this is something you can still learn and improve yourself. And uh, it's still very demanding to transform the situation in the theater into this three-dimensional situation you find below the skin. So when to use it? I think that right now there are very good indications and you should try when you think about it first in situation where we have got soft tissue problems. In geriatric fractures, like periprosthetic fracture, it, it might be good. It was shown in some papers. Pre-existing conditions or very complex articul articular fractures, of course, might be other reasons when you, once you are more experienced to use this method. So thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you.